Hi, lovely. So I know I told you yesterday that um, I finished putting up my bookshelves. So this video is our book tour video. So I hope you enjoy. Um, I kind of tried to make it so that my three shelves kind of almost like wrapped around and connected with each other, at least in most most parts. So hopefully that description made sense or with the book tour, it'll make a lot more sense for you. So we're going to go ahead and start over this away. Ta-da! Okay, hopefully you guys can still hear me. Uh, I know sometimes when I flip the camera, it gets a little funky. So on the top shelf, I have like my history. So we have the Hamilton, we have Hamilton and Washington. We do have the United States Con Con the Bleh Constitution. Um, we have Sources of the Western Tradition, which was a college book. We have Neil Patrick Harris's Choose Your Own Autobiography. And then we have, like, a few others that are, like, biographies. And then we start getting into, um, more of our historical fiction. So that's where, like, Rebel Queen comes from, Elizabeth, other tutors. We have Daughter of the Pirate King, which is, um, a historical fiction that I haven't read yet. Um, we also have, like, my Royal Diaries series, Decorum, and so on. And that leads us into the next shelf, which, again, more historical fiction here. Um, same with, like, Picture Dory Gray, Jonathan Strange, Amanda Quick. Well, that's the author. Um, otherwise Engaged, and so on. And My Lady Jane, Da Vinci's Tiger. And then this just keeps going. And then... Once we hit Outlander, which is both a historical fiction and a romance, then we get into our romance. So we have Bonded, which is by one of my favorite authors, Autumn Sand. We have Eve of Destruction. Then we have the Fifty Shades trilogy. We have the Sherilyn Kenyon um, books that are uh, technically part of her Dark Hunterverse series, but is actually um, romance for those specific ones. Then we go down here, and this shelf is my contemporary. So that includes both YA contemporary and some just regular contemporary like Eat, Pray, Love, and um, The Lace Makers of Glen Mara. Then we have my Jeff Zettner books. Um, we have The Love That Split the World, A Million Junes, Soundless, and so on. All of my Sarah Dessen books. Um, we have The Princess Saves Herself in this one, which is by Amanda Loveless, which, um, I found her on, um, Instagram. I think it was Instagram first, and then Tumblr, and then Goodreads, and whatnot. Then we have my Ellen Hopkins books. Um, we have Alice Hoffman here with Nightbird. This one, I was kind of unsure of where to put it, simply because it's a children's book, but it's like a contemporary children's book, and it's also like one of the only children's books I have. And then we go down into our fiction, like just normal fiction. And for this shelf here, I kind of tried to organize it not only by genre, but also by, like, color. So we have, like, black into brown and the lighter brown into white. And then we do our Roy G. Biv here for the rainbow. Um, so these are all just fiction in general. And then this bottom shelf here is, like, nonfiction, random other books. Um, I have cookbooks. French, psychology, um, and then, like, plays. Because most of those are heavier books, I had just kind of kept them down on a bottom shelf so they didn't break my shelves. So with the fiction, it goes all the way over here. I still have to throw away a couple of boxes. It goes all the way over here to more fiction. So these ones I would have done with the colors, except that I wanted to keep all the Dan Brown together. So we have Dan Brown, so we have Angels and Demons, Da Vinci Code, Lost Symbol, and his newest one, Origin. Um, 
I do on my Kindle have, there's one other book in the series and I can't think of what it is off the top of my, oh, Inferno. I do have Inferno on my Kindle. I don't have the uh, hardcover at this point. I have to buy it. Um, so then at this point, it goes into um, like psychological thrillers slash horror kind of that kind of thing. So we have Cuckoo's Calling. We have A Place of Execution, which is an absolutely fantastic psychological read. We have Cuckoo's Song. The third twin was actually a pretty good one. It was intriguing, that's for sure. We have a few Mary Higgins Clark ones, James Patterson, The Good Girl. We have Confessions of a Murder Suspect. And then this just kind of goes into like my fiction, like YA fiction type of thing. So we have The False Prince and The, and the Runaway King. And then we have Princess Gam uh, Captive Prince and Princess Gambit. I got to switch those around so that they're in the order that they're actually in. Ta-da! Okay. And then, um, technically, since even though those are fiction, they're kind of a little out of place because then I even did, like, my YA fiction, um, in genre type of things. So because I had these ology books, I decided, ooh, those could go ahead and, like, separate out different genres and types and stuff. So we have wizardology. So these are, like, books that have to do with magic and whatnot. So we have, like, The Crown's Game, Vast in the Night, Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom, all of the Grisha. We have Cassandra Clare's books. Um, we have Born Wicked, Uprooted, such and such. We have Prince of the Moon. Uh, and then we keep going as I will fix that down we have his dark materials which is like the golden compass and whatnot we have narnia we have burning glass three dark crowns and then um because the sword of shannara and the original shannara uh chronicles are not only magic but they're also technically dystopian because it's like a thousand years after our time like it's like a thousand years after the fall of of humanity i guess is the best way to put it then i went into dystopian so we have the entire selection series because that is totally dystopian even though it's also romance i decided to put it here in dystopian so that they could all stay together and i did not notice that apparently my copy of the crown is shorter that is weird um, and then we have Article 3, um, which I had sent to me from someone on Instagram. We have Uglies by Scout Westerfeld. We have Four, Mockingjay, The Glittering Court, Flawed. Now, this book here, Un-London, um, this one was hard for me to figure out where to put it simply because I had started reading it like seven years ago. And it's pretty much this girl goes to un-London. So it's like an alternate universe London. And um, so I just put it in dystopian. I can obviously rearrange it if need be. But it's a gorgeous cover and it is an autographed, cop uh, autographed copy, which a friend had given to me when we were in high school. And then we move down to more dystopian uh, so Left Behind, which is a series that has to do with um, essentially the, uh, oh, what is that word? I can't remember what the word is, but when, like, people vanish and other people are left or whatever. We have the Prince of Thorns series here because that's technically, even though it's technically, like, almost medievalish, much like... Terry Brooks' uh, Shannara Chronicles. This happens like a thousand years after the fall of humanity or whatever. Then we start going into more of our sci-fi. So we have like Ender's Game. This one, which my dad wants me to read, Old Man's War. Um, we have the Martian Tales trilogy. Uh, this is the same guy that wrote Tarzan and Hollow Earth. Like 
these two books actually happen in the same world as well like the same time period as tarzan so the hollow earth is like set in the actual like tarzan thing it's just in the earth we have pathfinder um from orson's got card which actually i could probably move that over here so that authors are together we have incarceron uh timekeeper cloud atlas and so on and uh the elementals are technically dystopian but because they're set in like space i decided they worked more for sci-fi then we have the illumini chronicles uh, well, the Illumini Files, the only ones that are out so far. And then we go down to our bottom one, where I have Assassins. Just, like, my little section of Assassins, but we have Assassins. So there's, like, Iron Assassin, Never Night in God's Grave, the Night Angel Trilogy, Assassin's Heart. We have this one called Web, Web of Lies. And then the rest are just, hello, cat. Hello, beautiful Hi, I know. I haven't paid you any attention right now. I need you to move. Uh, well, as you can see, she wants a lot of attention right now. So, um, also with the whole Assassin's thing, I do have the Assassin's Creed, like, visual history of the book, or of the um, games and whatnot. So that goes with it. And I technically have, like, a little empty spot. That's why it's kind of up here. And, um, and just kind of holding that spot. So then this is just like my regular YA fiction. So we have Tamar Pierce, we have Caraval, we have Falconer, Rebel Bell, uh, Julie Hall's book, Life After. And then that leads us up to my last bookshelf. So... Because Throne of Glass and just Sarah J. Moss takes up so much space, I just kind of gave her practically her own shelf. And as you can see, uh, Harley Quinn is just kind of like chilling here because, ah, because I lose Selena. Um, she kind of doesn't stand. She just topples forward because her head is on weird. If I have her head backwards, she stays. Um, then again, this is kind of just like fiction and stuff we have abra we have our red queen series we have the raven cycle then we do have like my little harry potter section here um we do have um the cursed child fantastic beast then this section here is like retellings so obviously wicked and son of a witch um and a lion among men those all have to do with, like, Wizard of Oz retelling. Then we have Everland and Umberland, um, which is Peter Pan and um, Alice in Wonderland, essentially, respectively, but part of the same series. We have the Lunar Chronicles, which are just kind of all fairy tales in general. And we have Heartless. And then this section here is kind of the... Um, the Alice in Wonderland retellings that I have because it essentially like we have Heartless, we have the Looking Glass Wars, Queen of Hearts, Alice, then we have the Splintered series. So like I have a lot. And then of course we have Once Upon a Time's Red, Red's Untold Tale. Um, we do have Roseblood, which is the um, Phantom of the Opera retelling. Well, more like continuation, but I liked it. Uh, we do have this one, which I wasn't sure where to put it because it's technically like a Robin Hood book because it has to do with, uh, um, I think, Guy of Gisborne. Yeah, it has to do with Guy of Gisborne. So um, it's technically in the retellings because Robin Hood is one of those weird characters. Then I did have Egyptology to go along with that series. So these are more of my um, mytho mythology retellings. So with Colleen Hoek, we have the Tiger's Curse series, which 
Um, I'm going to just end up rebuying the first two so that I have the complete series. Then um, we do have her Egypt one, the recreated series. Recreated, or actually reawakened because I have these backwards. There we go. And then, of course, Rick Reorns. We just got to have all Rick Reorns. So, yeah. And then we have the Smoking Lamp, which I actually won by Kimberly Lot. I won this one, and there was the Prince's Moon over on the other bookshelf um, that I won. And I happen to have, I believe, we're just going to do a little looky-loo. Oh, wait. Yes. Okay. A little looky-loo here. Do to do. do. Mm. I will find it. Ha! I found my name in here, which is awesome. So that's pretty cool because I have been a reviewer for her. And I actually have to review the second one of this. Gotta do that. But I've pretty much reviewed five or six of her most recent books. And so I get my name in the acknowledgments, which is pretty awesome. Mm. So back to our bookshelf tour. Uh, so then after that, it goes into like vampires. So we have Vampire Shrine, Crusade, which is actually a really good one. Temptation by R.L. Stein. We have the uh, House of Night series, or at least a few of them. Then... I didn't honestly know to, where to put Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, so it's just kind of here, along with Hush Hush, which is based on angels. Go down here, and we have our dragon books. So Dragonology, Dragon Chronicles, The Inheritance Cycle, Dragon Rider, The Dragon Spell Series, The Fire Within Series, which is apparently called The Last Dragon Chronicles, which I did not know that. Um, Hatching Magic, this series here, Dealing with Dragons, was probably one of my most favorite series when I was growing up. As you can tell, I was reading it, and I love, I just love the box set. Um, essentially, she, like, runs away and is like, hey, I will be your kidnapped princess and stuff. And this one was a very interesting book. Um, pretty sure this one was, which one was that? It was either Searching for Dragons or Calling on Dragons. Um, but essentially, this is not actually a donkey. This is a poor rabbit that gets, like, transformed multiple times because he's hungry and he just eats everything. And he happens to eat magical things that keep making him different. Uh, and then this one is the last book. This is... Talking to dragons, and it's it's just like a really cute series, and so you should totally, totally check it out, even though it's like for younger audiences. We have my Dragon Age. We have His Majesty's Dragon that series. We have Before She Ignites, and then we go down to our last shelf. So this is our fairies. So we have a Fairyopolis. We have the couple of books that I have currently of Artemis Fowl. I have at least four more somewhere in storage at my mother's because I have the first four. Um, and then we have Wicked Lovely, the first two. Then um, the Grim Legacy. I haven't read it, but I'm just assuming Grim Legacy, Grim Brothers, that kind of thing. Then we have Nightshade, which is werewolves. And then these are more just like fiction books. So I tried. I tried to uh, do at least some kind of something or other so that it was organized. So I hope you guys enjoyed this long book tour and i'm hoping you guys are able to hear me throughout the entire video and until the next one guys ta ta